Tom here from Orange Systems, and we're going to talk about actual quotes and invoices and kind of our process for this. Uh, the discussion comes up quite a bit, and uh, I wanted to actually show it. So if you want to learn more about me and my company, head over to LawrenceSystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project and actually have one of these formal quotes sent to you to get a project done, uh, you can do that. So there's a hire button at the top. If you just want to support the channel in other ways, there are affiliate links down below for deals and services that we have on this channel. And me and Brett are sitting here because um, we were just talking about the sales process. So names have been changed to protect the innocent, but these are uh, these are actual customer invoices. And I just cloned them over in our, we use Invoice Ninja. I have a few video reviews on that. There's an affiliate link down below if you want to sign up for it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I've been a longtime user. It's a free mm -hmm. open source pro uh, product you can use yourself. Because everyone asks, what do you use for invoicing? And I've done numerous videos on Invoice Ninja. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great tool. Yes. I, I enjoy, I've used a lot of invoicing products and this one is by just, far is easy, easier than any of them. Yeah. And that's an important factor. So uh, we're going to show you, walk you through the process. Now, the first thing we were laughing about before was don't eat onions before you go on a sales call. I ate a lot of onions and stuff for breakfast. So yes, like, he did. I'm just going to be. I said, I'm move closer. And he's that. like, you ate a lot of onions. I'm like, yes, that's. So first rule of sales, don't eat stinky foods. Or um, drink coffee. Yeah, between stinky foods and coffee, brush your teeth for sales. All right, now that we got some of the uh, jokes out of the way here, we're going to start with the quote process. So mm -hmm. you first, an email comes into us and um, you know, or email call, however, the methodology by which they uh, found us, YouTube. Uh, they are going to say, hey, I need this help. And there's going mm -hmm. to be like this particular job was a picture was sent to us of the wiring room. And this is a smaller job, uh, but it was, I, I don't have a photo. I'm not going to, you know, once again, didn't get permission from a customer to share their name or their wiring room, which was messy. As you can imagine, is it, just picture one in your head. There's plenty of messy wiring rooms. Right. Um, but there's obviously more to the story. So uh, you made the phone call to them, and you had to figure out what else they needed besides wiring. Yeah, well, when we were talking, um, and when, he, when you see the quote, you'll see a number of things that we've done uh, that, we're going to, that we did for the client. And um, it was, I believe in, 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 in actually having a conversation. So when you talk about sales process, I believe mm -hmm. in actually having a conversation and not leaving it up to email, because email can, can take longer than, than longer and you can go through a thread and miss something. So I like to have a conversation and take notes. And in and in discovery and I and you gotta have a discovery of some sort when you're when you have a sales process of what the client is needing. Um, they sent us these pictures, the 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 wiring was was atrocious. Um, a lot of things were were going wrong. Outdated equipment so that was a big thing. And you'll notice in this quote, we're, we're gonna, we, we did an SG3100 firewall because he had an old, outdated um, Cisco product yeah. that was... Passed into life. That passed into life. And, and so we, in, in, in having that conversation, we were able to develop what we came up with in this quote. Right. So what I'm going to do is show you with the quote that this is how the customer sees it. And I've already done, mm -hmm. like I said, behind the scenes of how we develop quotes and invoice engine, but this is what they actually look like um, we send to the customer. So Brett had the conversation on part of the discovery meeting. Now, I will, as a side note, mention we've talked about the fact that you can hire us for other projects like firewalls. They, those are a little bit different. This is specifically related to the wiring because occasionally the discovery is something we'll actually charge for because it becomes consulting to Correct. evaluate, like, hey, can you look at my firewall? That's not a sales call. That's a action item and things like that. But right. this was well, starts with the wiring. We get some photos sent to us. So then we come up with this with a customer. And uh, the client ID in this one is McTest Face. This is our internal testing customer. We've I've done videos with McTest Face before. He's becoming very popular. Yeah, becoming very popular. So um, we'll start with, you know, first they, they're going to need a 48 port patch panel. Then they needed a cabinet uh, to mount on a wall. So we got a price out for the uh, 9U wall mount cabinet. Then we have miscellaneous hardware. This is all those little things you need. And we line item all of these. So I've talked before about we have to have a drop price, but that's not the only thing. Occasionally mm -hmm. there's other stuff that needs to be done. Um, just, there's a lot of miscellaneous like little boards and things like that. Now, if the client asks, we will definitely give them a detail of mm -hmm. it. When people I've seen create invoices that are three pages long for a job like this, and I'm like, no, no. because most of the time it's rarely ever. How many times have people stopped and asked you, Brett, hey, can you line item how many screws you used? Never. 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 I, I get that question all the time when people ask how we do bids, and it's always from other techs. It's never from clients. Clients just go, cool, 75 mm -hmm. bucks in parts. Yeah, I seen the guy, he put a bunch of screws in a wall and a board went up there and et cetera, et cetera. They're like, cool, that's part of the job. They're not going to, they, just no one cares. Right. I've seen people list individual mud rings. I've seen people list like every little tool. I'm like, 
you know, and when you look at any of our, um, we have another one we're going to show you next after this one. But when you break some of those down, we'll just say wall fished and plated. That's right, it. Right. That means all the accessories, and we come up with a price for it to be complete. Um, and Brett threw on here, we have the network cleanup. We estimated uh, six hours to them. This is still the quote part of it. But that's including uh, a number of things because we have to actually do the punching down of that 48-port patch panel. Yes. We have to do, I mean, so it's more than just cleaning up. There's actual things that need to happen within that in, in the cleanup. So, And I tried to get somewhat specific on this so that there isn't a question. Um, but just, and, and, and this client had no questions about what we did. Um, right. which was nice. So, and most, and most don't. Most don't. It, it, it's rare. So this is what they're sent. You know, we talked to them on the phone, uh, seen the pictures, et cetera. I gave them a quote, gave them a proposal. They get sent this, they get to click the approve button. Now you probably noticed there's a deposit due. Um, that varies. We, we at least, the smallest amount we want is half down. Right. And it depends on our relationship with certain clients. Um, and how close they are, especially remote mm -hmm. jobs are paid up front. There's no question on that one um, because we're, they're remote. But when we're doing local wiring cleanup, we understand that they don't always want to pay for it 100% up front. And we generally don't ever have a problem getting paid mm -hmm. for the most part. It gets, it's not a big deal. So they're going to go to the approve process. That sends us a notification, uh, sends an email to whoever sent the quote, Brad, right. and then CC's our sales team. Uh, so all of us know that this has been approved. And you notice that right here, pay now. That's an important aspect. And right. uh, this is where, once again, kind of the uh, invoice engine, they make this easy. We have ACH payments. We have credit card payments. Mm -hmm. um, or they can uh, write us a check, which we prefer not. But if they have to, um, just some people really like checks. We're, we, that's just part right. of life. And, and, and you, <laughs> they have an accounting department or they have this and they have to send it. And we had a client that had to send us a check because, right. and it was a larger client, but it's just the way they work. Yeah. And our, we always remind them when part of the process, because we, uh, you know, we didn't even, this whole quoting process, by the way, didn't happen in person. Not every quote is delivered in person. Right. That, that is true. It doesn't have to be as much as we would like it to be there. And it's not necessarily a hard cutoff, the larger one. So the one I'm going to show you next. Yeah, we delivered that one in person, but this one in particular was not hand delivered in person. And we were fine with them. You know, it's, right, it, right. It, to this little we, we did have conversation and over the phone. And, right. and, and so I, we built that relationship over the phone with this. So, yeah. And now I, I cloned this over. This is for the demo purposes here. And now we have it set up as a right here. You can see what it looks like as an invoice. So it's unpaid and this would actually allow them to pay it. So let me click on that. And then they can pay the invoice and the final balance too. And you can kind of see, you know, uh, quote for network, hours and uh, build on actual. And we, this was no changes made. So the actuals became there. But generally speaking, we try to go over a little right. when it comes to the hours. Right. We will say, all right, we're going to take this. And we think six would be the max. And then maybe it takes only five. But we got there and it took the full six. So the job got completed at the exactly as quoted. Uh, but we generally mm. speaking, we try to go always estimate a little over because you're the you're not a hero if you come in. If I said six and it takes eight and there wasn't some obvious communication to There's the client. There's going to be a, a, an angst with the client thinking, what do you mean? Why is it eight? And then they will start to question right. every little line item on Every line item after that. But if you quote it six mm -hmm. and then come in at five, there, there's not even a question about it. Like, oh, the invoice is now less than, and now we've already paid more than half because you asked for mm -hmm. half down. You become the hero. It's not that difficult to do. Right. People get so worried about losing a bid because of it, but you, you just don't want to make a upset customer. And that matters more to me. I'd rather have a good flow of relationship. Right, right. Now, there's times when things change, We as we call scope creep, because you're there. Mm -hmm. um, as as uh, we called one client, we're like, well, they kind of borrowed our Eric for a while, but he yes. had for like eight hours. That yeah. we we. But this is the part when they said, "Can we keep Eric?" We're like, "Yes, this is the rate that you can keep him at." He came out there to do one thing that, but we didn't give you a quote for right. him to spend the entire next two days out there, essentially. Right. Um, and but because we right away, as soon as they wanted Eric to stay, Eric knew this is comes down to your tech training, comes down to your sales mm -hmm. training. Hey guys, they like me here all day. All right, let's give him a quote. Right. right. And, but the, setting the expectation is, I think, yeah. where you're leading. The expectation is important. Yeah. Setting that expectation. You told them what it was going to be for Eric to be there. Yep. They knew how long Eric was there, and so they expected. They paid that bill right away. Yeah, and they paid the bill right away. These are important things in case things do change. Now, the next question is, what happens on these bigger invoices? And that's why I'm going to pull up a bigger one. Um, let's see. This one here is bigger. Cool. Now, this is also a completed, this is completed job delivered. Um, and once again, 
we were talking about how he'd break things mm-hmm. down. Then the client has paid this bill. Um, it doesn't. It shows a balance due because when we clone them over, the payments don't clone over. Anyways, um, so data drop, install network drop, twelve outside access points. Uh, unit cost one sixty twelve. Now, when we talk about the setup of wiring jobs specifically, what this is related to. I do say completed, but there's a lot of times there's extra hardware. One, there was this particular job when was scoped out, needed a bunch of uh, J hooks mounted and beam clamps. So we bill for that. We charge for the hardware mm-hmm. that goes into accessories. So there's data drops when you're adding a drop, but you're using existing clamps and things like that. You kind of have to look at that to see if it's existing. This did not. Right. There's also prep work for wiring. Cable, cabinet, cleanup, and prep work. There's a bunch of stuff on there. Uh, server room prep and cleanup, uh, prep antenna removal, um, ceiling tile prefab mm-hmm. removal. We took down all the ceiling tiles. You do have to account for all these things right. on there. Uh, and this is one of those quotes, so like you can see, this is the line item added to job for quote. We had to add hours because once again, we are in full communication with a customer from what we originally build because as we kept popping tiles because they were re furbishing a building right. essentially yes, they were. more things were found so uh added job exceeding quote uh the teal ceiling fiber loop um we had to redo the fiber loop on that one uh aerial removal and we just had to clean it up it wasn't we didn't re crimp the fiber or anything it was just more <laughs> it was yeah. everywhere it was everywhere <laughs> yeah so uh it's one of those things just surprises by popping ceiling tiles that you find in a ceiling um then we charge for the patch panels then we charge for the um 14 half hours the mounting so the mounting was not included we did that separately so there's 14 half hours to mount all the wireless access points mm-hmm. that were included in this particular job then we have equipment rental fees um data drops just straight up normal data drops so mm-hmm. drops in office uh, in needed office space versus uh, drops in outside access points. Each one's broke out separately. And then we have the completed bill, fasteners and hardware and wiring ties. There was a mm-hmm. lot of that because it takes a lot of wiring ties. We keep the stuff really good. They put wiring ties. Yes, we use Velcro in case you're wondering. There's a habit of predefined things right. to say this. Um, we have big spools of Velcro that we use for all this. So it's right. kind of a breakdown on that. Well, you know, it was, it was funny is, 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 You'll see some if you come in and, and, and talk with us, you can see some of our invoices have a lot of these things included. When we t- talk about um, a camera or a wireless access point, um, we will actually encompass everything the drop, the mounting, and everything within that. This client wanted it spelled right. out specifically. And that's why I showed two different invoices. One client, these are two separate clients, right. even though we put them under the same client for demonstrations of this video. But one client was fine with this. The other client, um, they wanted things broke out. That's even why the data drops aren't summarized together. There's data drops for the office. There's data drops for what they referred to as the backbone. Correct. Because they wanted a redundant link between the two. It's like a big warehouse. There was uh, different sub-buildings, that you, mm-hmm. I guess you could say. There's a warehouse and a shipping uh, building area and a shipping yep. part. And there's a front office area. And they wanted the double backbones between them because right. in between there's warehouse space. Uh, but they wanted those line itemed and... It also made it easier because uh, they added a drop in one of the, I don't know which mm-hmm. of those areas got a drop. I'd have to look at the quote. But either way, they dynamically changed. And they know when the price went up, it's because we changed it Correct. and we added one more drop to you know those offices. So you kind of get the idea of why there's different things. So these are two different quotes done slightly differently. Both are completed paid jobs. Because um, I get a lot of people say, you need to have like six pages attached to this. You need to have uh, this, that, and the other. And I'm just like, okay, um, you guys keep telling me that and um, tell me that I need to list all the mud rings out and <laughs> I'm not. And we're still winning bids left and right uh, doing this. I'm not trying to be full of myself on it, but I'm just trying to tell you as myself, as a business owner, I've said this many times, mm-hmm. I, I have enough complicated things to deal with. I don't want a line item for all the salt that goes on in a parking lot. I just want to know that he salted, not the well, brand. <laughs> well, it's information <laughs> overload for a client, right? Yeah. When you, when you look, think about your customer, what they don't know what you know. So right. when you sit there and try to line item every specific little thing, thinking that you're doing a service to this to this potential customer, it's not. Because they start to read through this and they go, okay, this, this, and this. And the next thing they do is when they get about to the second or third line item, they go down and just look at the price. Yes. Because it's too much. They don't know the technical aspects that you know to give this quote. They just know that you're going to get it done. Yeah. And that's one of the things you're selling. You're selling the confidence that you can do the job, mm-hmm. that you complete it. You're not information overloading them. That is something that, you know, it's even hard for us when we've gotten handed bids from other people and we're like, 
they we come in with like our little two pages on uh, what was that like a seventeen thousand how much that other bid was yeah it, yeah uh, that bid was for seventeen thousand one hundred forty nine dollars and it fits on two pages <laughs> and I seen some of the competitors that have what looks like a mortgage <laughs> it, 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 it was thirty seven pages long yeah it was insane I'm yeah. like what are these guys doing like what is everything was this this initial on these seven pages and were, even the customers like. I just need my warehouse to have some wireless access points. Like That's seriously, guys, needed. like I'm not in, in, um, we're actually dealing with, they have an internal IT. This is a large company. They have internal IT, but not, they contract us to put these wireless access mm-hmm. points up. But these are some of the crazy things I see in there. And, uh, this is one of the things I kind of, at least my own opinion is I feel that brings us a higher level of success because it's clear, it's concise. I was able to explain it to you in this short video and this short video, if you were, buying, would you buy from me? You know, someone's mm-hmm. going, no, I like my legal papers in 37 pages. I don't like when the terms and condition can be read in 30 seconds or less or 10 seconds or less. It says yeah. quotes are valid for 14 days from original quote. This is only a quote. Actual costs may vary depending on changes in scope or unforeseen circumstances. So we've covered our bases in right. that. And if someone really pushes it, yes, we will change it to say not to exceed. Because if they say, well, what are unforeseen circumstances? Well, we pop a tile and uh, we get fiber landing right. on us that's unforeseen so we will either a charge you to inspect the mm-hmm. building ahead of time and do a small fee for an inspection and dive into climbing up in the ceiling uh, but this that other one required lifts to even get up to some of the areas right so we kind of said look we don't know what's up there you don't know what's up there either you can look we can look someone's gonna have to do that mm-hmm. or um we'll put a bunch of extra hours and say not yeah. to exceed not to exceed yeah but right. that means the quote's going to be higher we're still going to bill on actuals uh but i just want to rattle this out there because people ask it what does it look like when you're done and when you're starting a business this is something people really get hung up on and maybe that's why they go so complicated and maybe that's why so many people do it because mm-hmm. well i've always the other place i work for had these you know 37 page quotes for every time they did a job and so does this and i'm not saying there's not room to put legal and liability type of things in when you're writing. Right. Brett came from the insurance world. Right. I mean, insurance policies, yeah. There's some legal ease you have to cover because you're covering insurance. Right. But when you just want to get someone a price on a job. I, that's what they want is the price. I mean, you did, did, if, if at the end, and, and with the one customer he was showing you, we did come up with a scope of, of what we were to do, but that was only one page. Yeah. The scope was only one page. Yeah, they did want a scope of work summary right. on there and... Um, Oh, I, maybe I'll do it separate when we do a video about something like that. This is mostly the quoting process. Sometimes there are some extras, uh, terms, conditions, uh, mm-hmm. scope of work, summaries, and things like that. Those are, you know, relatively important uh, things to have if the client really requests it. But right. always start with the simpler and see if they request more. You don't have to. If you start dropping 37 pages on them, and even if you have the best price, they're a little worried because they're like, did you, how much time did you spend on attorneys writing this? Right, writing this quote out? It, they they want to keep it simple, stupid, right? That KISS method. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, in, it's important. You're only quoting. You're yeah. only quoting. They don't. You don't need to sit there and tell them every last minute you're going to be there. Figure out your time, maybe overestimate a little bit, and then you can scale back at the end when you go to invoice. And the scope of work was written after they approved the quote. Yeah. It was, they just wanted a few details clarified. Uh, and it was, it's, the scope of work is really just some real specifics. Mm-hmm. Like you, they, they wanted to line item where things would physically be put, what days we would be mm-hmm. there. They had some real details. And let's take back and put your business owner hat on again. Um, this project that we did in this warehouse, that, remember, they acquired a building. Mm-hmm. Do you know how many other like teams, you have alarm teams, you have people building offices, office furniture people, architects. You had so many things. Now think about every one of them has to give them some type of quote. Right. And they have to make a decision on all this. This is a big facility. So step, 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 step. You start adding all the steps of it. If everyone, I mean, let's say there's 10 vendors in there easily. Gave them all a 37 page yeah, quote. Yeah, gave them all a 37 page quote. <laughs> They, they would suddenly have a department just based on it. So you, when you come in simple, and some of the other people did too, by the way. I, you know, I just from talking to them, they seemed uh, the alarm people were pretty straightforward mm-hmm. with them. They were not certified alarm people. The certified alarm people worked nicely with us. Right. Uh, we had no problems. They didn't, um, no, no conflicts. All the wires, uh, nobody crossed the cables. Right. Yeah, everything was, <laughs> everything was handled right. The mm-hmm. thing is, I think the bottom line is keeping it simple. Yeah. Keeping it to the point. Um, we won this bid on a number of reasons, but the main reason was was we kept it simple and to the point. And concise. They understood what yeah. they were getting. They understood what we were delivering. And both of these bids, uh, like I said, they went through like that. So I just wanted to mm-hmm. share this and give this breakdown for you. Um, if you're interested in more details, and maybe I'll do an updated video about because I the in, what you use for do quotes and invoicing comes up a lot and it's the invoice ninja system we're still using it uh the videos i've 
done maybe over a year and a half, a long time ago on Invoice Ninja are um, very relevant. And for the last thing I've answered about Invoice Ninja is I just bring this up a couple times. This is quote number 24,375. Because we, Not in, bad. yeah, we have uh, imported all of our previous customers in there. So currently, Invoice Ninja has about six thousand customers, and because we imported old stuff, because we only been using Invoice Ninja for a few years, but um, there is a lot of quotes in it. Right. So uh, definitely makes it handy for that. Maybe I'll like to do some updated videos, but that is why the invoices look like mm -hmm. this. Because I will admit, I've seen quotes from QuickBooks; they look awful. And they, yeah. Th I just think it's maybe it's because they didn't take the time into it. But I'm not a QuickBooks fan. Uh, it just comes up in the comments all the time. In invoice. <laughs> Ninja is by far the, a superior product to any other invoicing system I've and ever used. He worked for large commercial agencies, like yeah. billion-dollar insurance agencies, literally B, not M, billion-dollar, yeah. big companies, and their quoting this, processes were a headache, right? A headache. And yeah. this, this is it's simple. Yeah, keeping things simple is a is a big part yeah. of the overall theme of the way we like to work. It makes it easier to interact mm -hmm. with your clients, um, and obviously having a smooth payment method for them, they can just click mm -hmm. the pay button, get you paid a lot faster. Absolutely, that, that's yes. a big secret. So, <laughs> or not really a secret. Maybe it's a secret to some, but trust me, it's an important aspect. It's a very important aspect. All right, and thanks, and thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.